and it's going to be exciting to see if it changes just a bit. And as of course, as you said, a little bit very different circle terrain. We had three very similar circles with Arangel, so it'll be uh, nice to see something different. Yeah, uh, the the fundamental problem is with some of these teams is that it wasn't the map that was the problem. It was the fact that we kept seeing teams that were instead instead of taking long range third parties, making aggressive third party plays. And uh oh. Looks like Zenith might find themselves in a little bit of trouble as Pankill should be able to land and maybe find himself a weapon fairly quickly. Zenith needs to try to try to get away from this position. A couple of shots going to go back over towards it, but not enough to even connect onto anything. So Zenith in a little bit of trouble, but going to be able to find a little bit of safety and now should just be able to regroup and find some new home that they want to go to. Are really the only Western team in position. Liberate starting to make a little bit more of a play back over towards Shoot to Kill's positioning. But really, it's these teams that are trying to give Crater Fields and El Pozo a burst. Ooh. And now I finally get it. I want to see a trailer park ending. I've been looking forward to this for <laughs> so long. The early positions coming out means the fact that Illusion is going to have themselves a decent place to play. But this long rotation coming out from Zenith means that they have the entirety of the West to themselves. All those teams that were clustered around El Pozo now have to deal with the funnel. These hills make their own little death funnels that teams that are in position can really just rack up kills. Teams like Comets potentially dodge. All these guys can look back over into it. That's why Rarity is already on the go and is is not stopping for anything. No, uh, I mean, really can't stop for anything either as you just take a look at the map and see how many teams are in this area, but sending it up ahead to Trailer Park is not going to work well in their favor either as both players are going to get knocked off the motorcycle and it looks like Light Show is going to pick up both the Nate and Subtle for the kills there. Now that said, with the rest of the team rotating in, you've got Gas Cans that have held the other high ground here and Rarity uh, once again finding themselves in a little bit of a tricky position. Old List just ahead of us. He might be able to spot them out here, take a little bit of damage, but I think I think at the very least Rarity should continue this rotation. Now the question of course is what is the rest of one eye open and Hardy doing a little bit of the same. He's been scouting ahead for his team. The rest of them still coming in through El Pozo where Comets are currently working on a little bit of a fire range against Dodge. So this is a worse place for Patron and rest of the squad to drive through because you've got two different teams shooting in this vicinity. No, I mean, Comet's a, a little bit of the compound curse with El Pozo. Most teams have really done a good job of steering clear of this. And as the rest of the teams are working their way to rotate in the zone, Gravity got a little bit close to Virtue, but continued on. As we can hear a handful of bullets out in Maluk's direction. I think One Eye Open uh, might have spotted him out from the south. So see shots out as well. Alo and San Diego Rarity uh, very close to each other as Voxic <sighs> out on a scouting mission. And this circle shift with the road directly through the center has got to make these IGL scream right now as they try to figure out where to push through. We aren't going to have that trailer park finished, but these centralized compounds are already taken out. As we can see, Alo continuing to try to get shots into what's left of San Diego Rarity, while the rest of Shoot to Kill is just now, I think, starting to send it. Purdy Curdy and Siv working their way down. And uh, look at this. I mean, ATC and Oath right on the backside of Shoot to Kill. We can see the kill feed blowing up. Everybody is trying to get as close to the zone as they can, Matt, but there's not really much with all this open area. Oh, Ooh, look at that throwable. So close, but now know the fact that they already had an idea that danger was close and on top of them, next bounce is gonna land right up on top of the position. Alo just busts open the door. There's a full flank going around on here. Remember, Shoot to Kill was originally known as one of the best breaching teams and they still have a ton of that roster together. And whenever it comes into taking a building complex, they have no fear inside of it. I'm still mad though. I want a trailer park. I wanted it so. <laughs> All right, Zenith I mean, is still there, so we can hold on. Maybe there's we'll get a, a fight around that position, but you can see it's starting to get a little bit more bloody as Dodge left their high ground position, ran right into the Comets, who made a reposition back over towards the north. Danny G, last one up for his squad, trying to get as much as he can out of this position, trying to dodge through the flames, but it's going to be Comets that managed to pick that one up and get control of a nice complex, but they got to be careful. Elusive hears it, starting to move into position to take a couple of shots, but long range shoot to kill, puts in a little bit of damage and forces them away from the play. Uh, this really firing coming out from Ascendance as well as putting the pressure on the rest of Elusive. Fizzle, I think, was trying to get as close to Sneak Attack as possible to see if he could try to get the res there, but it wasn't going to happen. Nice shot out from Decinator.
towards shoot to kills. They've continued to spot more enemies way off the distance. But you look at the map. Elusive is a little bit what? safe here, but they can't do anything from this position. Any time that they take a peek, they're just going to get shot at by somebody else. But now, speaking of getting shot at right now, Virtue with, oh, a very nice vehicle hit onto Doobie, who's going to get taken out there. Tanaka getting flashy with it while Super spots out Patron. Good position coming out, and that means the fact that Virtue, who had been doubling around and almost felt like a junior high school dance, we said one eye open and Virtue kept thinking about fighting, like, ooh, will you fight with me? I don't know. I don't know if I like you enough to fight with me. Maybe. Finally, they decided to call it together. Virtue makes the play, takes down one eye open, but now they're going to have to continue to make their way just a little bit further north. Looks like most of the teams have now settled into different positions. It should be noted that we do have a 2-2 split coming up from Shoot to Kill to the North. All the rest of the teams firmly grouped except for Gravity as well, who's running a 2-2 of their own. Snakers is kind of holding on for dear life right on the edge of the circle, trying to buy more space and positioning. But really, the big factors that are coming out on top of this looks like it's going to be Ascendance that has a lot of circle control, Gravity's 2-2 split, depending on how things go, and really Shoot to Kill's 2-2 split because they just keep harassing every single team and they're funneling them to other teams and forcing them to fight each other. And that, you know, forcing and funneling has been something that's worked so well so far for them right now. Oath all the way only down to Snakers and kind of trapped in along the edge. But ATC being in this dip is actually, I think, going to force Shoot to Kill's attention more so in Snakers' direction. So it, depending on who takes out Snakers here is really going to allow ATC to turn their backs and focus back at the fight at hand on Shoot to Kill. But as this circle takes another hard shift back, this time going far to the south, that means that this fight does not have as much time as they Wait. were hoping. And Nork is just going to go ahead and send it uh, and trying to get the rest of ATC out of there. So if he can find a little bit of safety, and I mean, Gila is going to follow shortly after and shoot to kill. And what's left of Oath are, are going to have to also kind of make that decision how they want to get into zone. So uh, really loving this play now from Norcus. He's got the ability uh, to set up an ambush on to shoot to kill here. Well, Shoot to Kill is actually trying to ambush so many different teams. They were taking a fight against Zenith at one point. They were taking pot shots long range against Elusive as well as ATC. They're just trying to funnel everything and get control of the Northern Corridor, which they've managed to claim for themselves. It's really just Snakers, the only point that can kind of contest against them. Everybody else has, meanwhile, been playing back down towards the south. The problem with Shoot to Kill's plan is that the circle went very hard to the south. So all that work that they put in and that separation isn't going to buy them a lot. Now they need to figure out some way to make a play back down along this position, and they're going to try to play the low ground based off of that. Zenith is still trying to harass them as they go, but they don't want to over-aggress just quite yet because they know that there's only two members up. They've also been having to contend with Illusion that's just on the other side of this hill. So they have to figure out how they're going to want to handle this. We've seen that Zenith manage to make some very phenomenal plays so far today, but they've got their backs up against the wall. I can't wait to see what they try to bring out next. Well, I am really excited for this, too, because... Oh, well, of course, I say that bullet's actually out of this area. So Kickstart uh, trying to pick him up, stay alive as possible. Bobbing and weaving. This is actually the best vehicle to try to stay ahead of it, but it's not going to be enough. Roth immediately gets picked off by Free Me Please, flushed out by Top Dog, and they're still not in the zone safely yet. Now in shooting range here for Shoot to Kill, Purdy Curdy uh, with shots onto Kickstart. And unfortunately, the very open field. It's going to make this a very difficult one for Kickstart to get in closely. And we see as well, Oath kind of suffers to the exact same fate. But at any given point, while he's over here doing his little dance, that's distracting Shoot to Kill, and they're not capable of turning around and reclaiming the territory that they so desperately want to. On the other side of this, it's going to be Jay all day starting to get a little bit more aggressive back over towards ATC as they're now being forced out into different points. But up, oh, there we go. Finally, Purdy Curdy manages to catch the angle, takes him down. New Circle has popped, and it favors back along the position for Shoot to Kill, Illusion, Gravity, Ascendance, and now ATC since they've cleared out Elusive. ATC's really helped held their cool now, but the biggest problem is that they're going to have to cross the street. If they come up from that position and try to get into the zone, that's going to take them downhill, and the only way to get back into cover is to push the area that we see all of the rest of the teams currently occupying. Shoot to Kill is in a beautiful position for this circle to continue to do damage and not have to worry too hard just yet about other teams. It's actually Virtue and Maluk for hardships as well as Comets that are in a very tricky position because there's nowhere to send that is free right now. The hard decision is going to be wherever they put down, they're going to have to immediately fight for, try to take back control and keep as many members as they can alive. Comets already down to three. Maluk solo out by himself and you can see that the moment they have make it, taken the peak here, they're already facing tons of Noxes. Only Vegas is still up for Comets. Now and it is looking rough. 
Zenith had a plan. Didn't work out too well. Comments were like, I have a different plan. Didn't work out very well either. Vegas, <laughs> last guy up, tries to make a play. He's going to go down. That means that Ascendants get control over that complex. ATC was contemplating dancing back that direction, but they're not going to go for it as well. Luke does get spotted out, but managed to buy a lot more positioning than I would have expected going down in seventh. At least getting a couple of position points out of that. It's going to be Virtue, really, that have the virtue of being the only team that has to make their way inside the safe zone. All the other ones starting to get into firm control points to work around. Gravity is still running their 2-2 split. Two of them still trying to hold back the positioning of Virtue's trying to make their way up towards the north. Illusion also has a sight line back over towards this angle, so that's why you can see Virtue not a lot of options to work with at the time. Keep glancing back over towards the east, but if they start trying to make a play back over there, that just means Ascendants might spot them out. Ascendance has been doing a very good job of spotting people out indeed. We've seen them do quite a bit of damage to get a couple of kills to show for it this match, but uh, this compound could also prove a little bit problematic because the circle should shift away because the road is really split up so much through the eastern side. Now, Virtuous found themselves a nice little dip here. Unfortunately, Zovereign uh, is going to get a knock onto Super, but they might be able to pop off a res uh, if they can act quickly. We can see as well, though, Pan Kill from Gravity has actually anchored himself on the opposite side of here of Virtue, and that is going to spell disaster for them as even Shoot to Kill gets in on this. Yeah, I'm, the moment they walk back down inside that dip, everybody had vision on them, and there's nowhere to go. There, I mean, we often make the joke about, like, like fish in a barrel or whatever else, but that was just virtue in a barrel. There was nothing to be had in that spot. Wherever they opted into playing away from gravity, they were just as good as dead. Gravity had one of the few control points that they could maybe make a play around, and they actually had the numbers advantage on the 2-2 split that Gravity was running at the time. New Circle is going to pop. ATC, Ascendant, still happy. Gravity, two of their members still happy, and Shoot to Kill has their hillside to play around. Shoot to Kill's repositioning back along this hillside because you know the fact that they're aware that it's going to have to be Illusion that has to move. So trying to set up along this point, they're looking back over, waiting for the moment that we see that team try to make a play, and that's whenever they're going to try to make a play of their own to counterbalance off of it. Light Show looks like he might be contemplating making his way back over next to where Shoot to Kill's positioning at, because this is really Illusion's only option. They have to make a play aggressively back over towards Shoot to Kill and maybe get some type of opening to work around. Light Show gets enough damage to buy at least some space, but it looks like the rest of the team doesn't want to go that way. Light Show, I like what you're putting up right now gets a little bit of damage back over towards shoot to kill looks back over towards gravity takes down pan kill that was their back anchor point so that's going to open up more pathing options coming up for illusion instead a second ago they had no way to cut a path right through the middle of the circle now they have some type of option to play around losing pan kill inside of that point d rich also goes down for gravity so now gravity is two that is very centered are the only ones that are holding that line and illusion can reposition back around to that angle uh, Civil's really pressure these continue to hold onto Illusion as very, very good. But it looks like Norcus is actually going to start challenging that as it gets a couple shots into him. We can see even Kurt has just lost all of his armor. Both his helmet and his vest are completely damaged. In fact, the vest is offering nothing, but it is broken. And so shoot to kill while they are in a really nice position. They're starting to struggle with their ability of what they've got left to hold it. And I think Illusion read that as, you know what, this rotation up north, it's not going to work. They tried to send instead directly in a circle, but they're going to be met right away by both gravity and ascendance oh. a beautifully thrown grenade by Zovereign takes out free me please and you can see the struggle in the eyes of illusion and know that they have nowhere safely to go into the zone uh, there's no options there's nothing good to work around light show the last one up he was trying to make some magic happen a second ago but it's not going to have enough to manage to make it happen this time so down to four teams alive it's going to be shoot to kill still playing along their hillside confirmly regroup now back over towards the east of them. It's going to be ATC, shoot to kill, getting a good line of sight back over towards them, forcing them to go away from it. Ascendant still playing inside their complex. Gravity running there too, still in the center of the circle. Circles may change, but some things stay the same. Finally, Ascendant does have to move though, being one of the few teams that really has to, and my God, if I thought that that was a grenade. If that had bounced, Zoverum <laughs> was as good as dead. Uh, Zovran in a nice little center anchor point position. The only thing that's really keeping him from being spotted out by both Norcus and Ascendants is the dip just beside the road. But we can see Shoot to Kill is still trying to get to him and, and throw a range. And throw a range is exactly where he is. Siv with a beautifully thrown Molotov. Luke 12 is going to get the flush okay, onto that. And you gotta, you got to love this here. But now Ascendants, Matt, they have to leave this compound. This is what we talked about with the road and how that compound could hurt them when that circle shift one more time. Really, where Aguila and Lipset is, that is the best place to be for this zone. Ascendants 
Now throwing out the smoke wall. This is their only chance to get in safely, but look where the smoke wall is leading. It's out in the open and shoot to kill as the perfect line of sight for where they hope to end up. Aguila's reposition moves him over next to the center of the circle. It gives him a little bit more space. Also allows him to contend against shoot to kill. Utility smokes being thrown down like mad by everybody from Ascendance, but there's not a lot of good options ahead of them. They're just trying to peek out and around the smokes, but there's too many firing lines against them. Norcus has got the side of it because he didn't come up and forward. Shoot to kill still making use of their terrain, peeking around everything, raining in more damage. Ascendance slowly creeping forward are going to make it inside the safe zone, but they're not safe by any means at this time. It is just the smoke plumes keeping them alive. As these start to dissipate, they're going to find themselves in worse and worse trouble. ATC is using the Ascendance distraction to start to flank back over, regroup. The two are starting to meet back up and maybe push into a position where they can contest against anything that Shoot to Kill can bring. They've got a flank position back over towards Ascendance as well as Ascendance is just being picked apart piece by piece, slowly and steadily from two different teams. The whole time, Lipson, the last one up for gravity, is just huddled in his shack, praying that nobody gets aggressive back over towards him just yet, but shoot to kill. Starting to separate out, finding their angles. ATC is now aware with that separation out back over towards Ascendance means the fact that maybe the top of the hill might be open. Goes for the peak up there, realizes, okay, they've already shifted back off of this point. Now it's just going to be a fight for the shack as Lipson's trying to survive for as long as possible. He knows that he's at the center of it. If he can just survive here, he can at least buy second. But Shoot to Kill is trying to find some way to get him out of that point. They can't overextend, though, because ATC is still harassing off to the side. And really, that harassment off to the side is one of the things that's been doing a good job at keeping him alive. It's forced to shoot to kill down into the low ground here in the bowl. And Aguila's going to be able to use that to his advantage to get a headshot there onto Purdy. Purdy tries to get the flush, make sure it's not stolen there by Lipson, who still can't quite peek just yet without threat of shoot to kill. But we can see them now rotating back in ATC's direction. So they want to make sure not to get spot out. I mean, we saw what happened last game, Matt, when you just pick off one member of shoot to kill. Sometimes they can all fall. You can't discount them out just yet. And Trolls in chat has done a good job. They were in a very negative position. They were low man out. They didn't have a lot of members to work with. They were having to cross along the road with Shoot to Kill holding a defined position, but they managed to find the openings to now step over and start contesting more and more. And let's be real. It is any Trolls in chat against Shoot to Kill right now. Gravity really can't find an angle to make anything work. Norcus is right up on the angle. Tries to go for a peek back behind Ooh. it. Gets a shot back onto one of them. But this is your time, Gravity. The last member up peeks the wrong angle, and that's going to be Shoot to Kill walking away with a massive 18 kills.